And this is the fourth and final um, arithmetic geometric sequence and series application problem. Okay, and this one gets a little bit confusing, but I'm going to do the best I can to make it clear for you. So they're telling us a ball is dropped from a height of 30 feet, and each time it strikes the ground, it bounces up to 80% of the previous height. So I'm going to draw a picture, and I would advise you to draw a picture every time, every time you draw a picture. So it comes down, it hits the ground, and then it bounces back up, and 80%, roughly, I'm not drawn to scale. And then it falls back down once it goes up to that height, and then it bounces back up 80% of that height. Then it falls back down. Then it bounces back up 80%, and it keeps doing this forever. So you'll notice this, we would say this is bounce one, or the first time it falls, this is bounce two. This is bounce three, and here comes bounce four. Now I can draw out more of these, but this I like to set it up so that I get a good enough idea of what's happening. Um, the first fall was 30 feet. And then the next one, it's 80% um, of that, so that's 24 feet. So this one's 24, and this one is also 24. And now, um, what is it? So if you remember how we can do our recursive stuff, 30, and then I'm times 1.8. So 24, then 19.2 is the next one. That is 19.2, pretend. The next one becomes, this is 15.36. That looks terrible. Okay, do you know what I'm trying to say? Um, and then we can keep going and find more of the, these values, but let's, let's write some equations. So the first thing I notice is that I've got basically two sequences happening at the same time. And I'm going to refer to the ones that are going downward as d sub n. So this, so d sub n is the, the, the downward, I don't know why I wrote an S, the downward, oh, sequence, that's why I wrote an S, the the downward path. Okay, and then the ones that are going up, notice these, I'm going to call u sub n for the upward, the upward path. Well, notice this is the first one. This is d sub 1. Here comes, this one is d sub 2. It's going down the second time. Here is d sub 3. Here is d sub 4. Um, this one is u sub 1. It's the first time up right here. This is u sub 2. This one right here becomes u sub 3. Etc. So notice u sub 1 is the same as d sub 2. So you've got a few options to think through this, but this is what I have found to be the most effective. Um, let's write the rule. d sub n, the first value is 30, times the common ratio on both of these is going to be, it's, it's doing 80%, so times n minus 1. That way the first one, I plug in 1, that goes to 0. The first d1 was 30. U sub n can be written as the first time it bounced up, it, its first term was 24. And we've got that sort of situation. Um, so I can use, okay, so let's look at the first question. It says, what height will the ball bounce up to after it strikes the ground for the third time? Well, granted, I drew that. Okay, so here it's bouncing. But if I had said the tenth time, then it becomes a little bit harder. You don't necessarily want to draw them out or, or do the re recursive way of getting that answer. So what height will the ball bounce up to after it strikes the ground the third time? After the third time, that's u3 or d4. So we can find u3 or d4. Well, either one. So I, and I actually already know the answer is 15.36, but so d, say let's say d4 is 30 times 0.8 to the 4 minus 1. Okay, we already know the answer, but here we go. 30 times 0.8 raised to that, it ends up getting raised to the third power. And like we said, it was 15.36, and our units are feet. Okay, it says how many times does the, does the ball need to strike the ground? Okay, so now we're looking for n. So n is what we're looking for. Before it bounces, less than 6 inches. Okay, so before it bounces... Um, that means it once we want to see when does u in six inches would be half a foot. So let's keep our units the same. We want to know when does u sub n when is it first less than half a foot. So I'm going to use does that make sense I, or when is um, yeah how many times does the ball need to strike the ground before it's it's bounce. It's bounce is that return trip up. It's u sub n. 
Can you see all my, my lovely drawing? Um, so u sub n was equal to 24.8, oh, I lied, 24 times 0.8 to the n minus 1, so sorry. Um, and I'm going to pick up my calculator again, menu, I'm going to go to my table, we still have the previous problem, um, so this is, I just forgot, Okay, and I'm looking for it to be less than, oh, I didn't go far enough. So I can come back. I can either type in random values, um, like from here in my table, and I can say, okay, what's 20? It'll tell me. Um, or I can go exit out and, oop, exit out and set. That's what I wanted to do. Let's try to 15. I don't think it's going to go much. Let's see. So if I scroll down, oh, that wasn't good either. Okay, so I want it to be less than one half. So set, let's go to 20. So notice how I kind of, I'm making educated guesses, but I'm kind of guessing my way through here. Um, still more than a half a foot, still more than half a foot. So by the 19th bounce, it bounces up. How many times does it take the ball? I lied. How many times does the ball need to strike the ground before its bounce is less than six inches? 19 times. And that's the answer to that problem. Okay, what total distance does the ball travel in 12 bounces? Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So notice when we look at the picture, say we, say we change that problem to what's the total distance it travels by bounce four? Well, notice it has gone down one, two, three, four times, but it's gone up one, two, three times. Okay, so if I want to do the total distance, well, let me see if I can keep going. The total distance it does in 12 bounces, it needs to go down 12 times and up. So it's... Um, the sum of 12 times plus the sum of 11 times, where this one is d sub n and this one is, um, I lied, u sub n. Okay, so then the, that becomes 30 times 1 minus 0 0.8 to the 12 over 1 minus, minus 0 0.8 plus um, the next one was 24 was the first term. And I need to figure out that value. Now, if we want to find the total, if it says, like, I'll let you figure out that final answer, or check my answer key. Though, if it says the total distance, if it, and it doesn't say a bounce, then we need to use the sum of an infinite. So I, oh, sorry, I don't have to write the infinity, but a sub 1 over 1 minus r. So we would say, well, 30 over 1 minus 0 0.8 plus 24 over 1 minus 0 0.8. So check my answer key for those last two. It's now lunchtime, and I'll talk to you later.